One coffee, one bacon roll. Can there be anything better than sitting on a pontoon, dangling your feet in the water, watching the world go by? Morning. Funny, isn't it? Some mornings everything goes right, and then some mornings rigging our win, it's all a tangle. It doesn't matter how well I pack her away. This morning was one of those tangle days. Three times I had to undo the shrouds because I'd got ropes the wrong way around. And I checked each time. Very frustrating this morning, but just one of those things occasionally happens. But here we are, we're on the Barbican landing stage, temporary pontoon for small dinghies and boats and the tide is outgoing. It was high tide at seven o'clock, it's about nine o'clock now, and it is 25 degrees Celsius. 25, nine o'clock in the morning. Welcome to the British heat wave. I've been aiming to cut down my use of the outboard this year, so this is why I'm picking up a mooring in the cap down. Um, I'm going to raise sails here instead of motoring into Jenny Cliff Bay each time. It's also an opportunity to do some last minute checks and any further sorting. I've moved the mainsail and jib halyard cleats to the foot of the mast, which makes the sail raising now so much easier. No crease. Amazing, eh? Not a lot of wind either. But hey, who cares? There's a mackerel shoal underneath me and, well, it's gonna be a nice day, isn't it? Still got to trim all this running rigging to the correct lengths, there's way too much stringing the cockpit here. Now, someone did say to me via YouTube comment that once I'd altered my sails and I'd got them correct, I should watch out because they'd power up fast. So I've got to bear that in mind today. 
because that crease always meant that the top of the sail was slightly depowered. But I've managed to set it so that now she pulls right to the top of the mast. And I can adjust the tension on the downhaul much better. And to all intents and purposes, um, that crease has almost, not quite, but almost disappeared. I'm happier. Thank you to everyone who helped sort that. It's only taken 10 years for me to get it. I'm the definition of what you would call a, um, a slightly slower learner. The winds are mainly from the east today. Uh, they've started off at uh, north northeast, and they're just going around to um, southeast, and sort of variable, about six, seven, eight knots, um, gusts 12, and a sea breeze will pick up this afternoon, of course. There's lots of people just anchored over there at the moment in Jenny Cliff Bay. Just anchor there for the day. G and T's, good swim, I suppose. Nice, nice, nice idea, really. I've never quite got big yachts. I have sailed on a few, and never enjoyed it as much as I do in a small boat. Don't know why. Can't explain it. But there you go. going to head straight south um, and go out about a mile and a half, two miles, and then we'll cruise back towards Rame Head, and then we'll turn around, go back upwind, and we'll just keep circling that area for a bit and see if we can see them. I haven't heard any reports yet of tuna shoals, although I'm sure they're out there. I always keep an eye on um, the lone kayaker, uh, Rupert Kirkwood. Um, he's normally the first to know what's out there. Um, and if you haven't seen his blog, um, go find it. It's called The Lone Kayaker, and he has the most extraordinary adventures in his kayak. They're doing lots of building work at the moment over at Bovisand. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I read somewhere that they're putting in lots of new luxury flats and things like that. It's just there. I can see wind ripples just there. Well, passage planning taking into account winds and tides is something I'm still working on, as you can see. on it a bit, pinching to the wind a bit, so I'm going to have to go across towards Bovisan uh, to then do a tap back to get out, or, or else I'm not going to clear the breakwater.
No wind. Nothing. Not a flicker. It's going to be so hot. 32, 33. Might be anchoring and going for a swim. Aha. And possibly just a flicker of a breeze. Possibly. See what we can do with it. Pickle winds. Pickle winds. Headed back down into Jenny Cliff and now I've come back again and this time I think we're just about going to clear the breakwater without pinching too much although the winds keep going all the way around to the southeast they've done it again as I'm talking so they were coming from over there they've literally switched around to over here in the space of less than a minute all I want to do is get past the breakwater Going. 13 meters wide at the top, 60 meters wide at the base, 1500 meters long. It's in 10 meters of water and it used 4 million tons of rock in its building in 1812. That's the closest I've ever come around the breakwater. I could see starfish on the rocks there. Oh, oh I don't want to do that again. <laughs> oh my word. Uh, there's pinching and there's downright stupid. <laughs> oh my word. I could see gnarly throngs coming up to grab me. Right, okay. We're out in the uh, south of the breakwater at long last. And not a lot of wind but we will just keep heading out to sea and we'll start taking a look in about half an hour see if we can see any of the minke or fin whale that have been reported in the area um, at the very least hopefully we might pick up some uh, uh, porpoise or dolphin what a glorious day it is look at this Uh, I was over at Bovisand a couple of weeks ago at the cafe looking down the breakwater. It's just over there behind me on the cliffs. And I can't get over how many uh, new lobster pots and possibly even nets. I didn't think they were allowed to put out nets, but the sheer number of lobster pots which are now off the back of the breakwater is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, just in my field of view now, I can see around about 16, 18 pots, uh, or floating, floating canisters anyway. Quarter past 10 coming up on 30 degrees Celsius. 
Lots of fluid today, loads of it. Say, by past experiences, this is a really nicely set sail. The dark arts of sail trimming, eh? 12 years it's taken me to start working that out. Oh dear God, think what would have happened if God had given me a brain, eh? Much better. John, if you're watching, I am so sorry, mate. It's taken this long to work it out. I do apologize. Join us for part two of a disappearing crease. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed sailing with us, click the notification bell and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, fair winds to you all.